So an important polysaccharide as an energy store is known as starch. And this is found in plants, where the main polysaccharide energy store is known as starch. And it's made of two main molecules. So starch is normally found in particular types of cell. It's found in photosynthesizing cells, so those that carry out photosynthesis, which are in the leaves, and they're also in storage cells in seeds and storage organs. So looking at a plant here, we find starch in leaves, and we find them in storage organs or seeds. So this is where we find starch. Inside the cell, it's compacted into a dense, insoluble grain or granule stored in a special organelle, and the organelle is called the ameloplast. So here's a diagram of a plant cell, and we can see various organelles inside the cell, but one of these organelles is known as an ameloplast. This should be easier to remember as we go through because you'll find that starch is made up of molecules which start with amylo. So ameloplast are similar to chloroplast in their name, but they store starch. And it's sometimes referred to as a grain or a starch grain. The storage organs, like for example underground potatoes, contain cells with lots of ameloplasts to ensure that the plant always has a nice sufficient supply of energy. So if you were to look into a storage organ, which many plants have, you'll see that there are numerous ameloplasts in each cell. And of course, inside these ameloplasts, you'll find lots of molecules making up the starch. So you can see that it's used by cells which have a high energy demand. Seeds are using this for growing. And at the leaf, the photosynthesis process is making starch and so that starch is being stored until it's needed around various parts of the plant. So let's talk about what starch is actually made of. We know it's a polysaccharide but it's made of different components. Starch is made of two different polysaccharides called amylose and amylopectin. They're very similar but there are important differences. Looking generally on the left we have amylose which looks like a kind of slinky shape and on the right we have amylopectin which has slinky shapes, but it also has other slinky shapes joined on to other slinky shapes. So it's much more sort of spidery looking. So let's talk about amylose first of all. Amylose is a long chain of alpha glucose molecules, and they're joined together by 1,4 glycosidic bonds. So let's just recap on what that means. Here is a long chain of amylose, and each of the hexagons is one alpha glucose. So the polysaccharide itself is lots of alpha glucoses joined up in a chain, and they're joined to each other through condensation reactions at a glycosidic bond. And the glycosidic bond acts as the bridge between two sugars. And remember that for every alpha glucose and most monosaccharides, we actually number the carbons from one to six, or however many there are. So in this one, we always start from three o'clock. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if we do the one next to it as well, one, two, three, four, five, six. You'll notice that some carbons are just represented by the corner of the shape rather than writing C. We've got a carbon one joining to a carbon four. So this is why we call it a one, four glycosidic bond. And you'll see that happening along the whole length of the amylose. One to four, one to four, etc., etc. So every time there's a bridge, it's a one to four glycosidic bond. When these bonds form in a long chain of alpha glucose, it doesn't just stay as a straight chain, it actually coils up into a helix shape, and this is what makes it very compact. So remember, one of the important properties is that polysaccharides are compact, so they take up less room. So when you look at the amylose, you'll see that it does this, instead of a very long straight chain, which would take up a lot more space. So when you look at each amylose molecule, it only has two accessible ends where the enzyme amylase combined. So remember, these are storage molecules for alpha glucose. So whenever energy is needed, we need to snip off alpha glucoses one at a time to be used in respiration. And the way it does this is that the enzyme amylase breaks down amylose at the accessible end, but it can only access here and it can only access here. So it only has two accessible ends for the enzyme to start clipping off these glucoses for respiration. And because of this, it's only really broken down slowly. So it's not the best way to get alpha glucose from an energy store. The other polysaccharide that we find in starch is known as amylopectin. And we said that this is similar to amylose, but of course it has a few more complicated branches coming off. And again, this is stored with amylose in those amyloplasts of the plant cell. So the similarity is that amylopectin 
is also a long chain of alpha glucose molecules joined with 1,4 glycosidic bonds. Again, this isn't alpha glucose. If we number the carbons from 1 to 6, we can see that the glycosidic bond lies between carbons 1 and 4, and therefore this is a 1,4 glycosidic bond. So this is exactly what we had in amylose. But amylopectin has an additional feature. It also has the occasional 1 to 6 glycosidic bond. So this is our original amylose chain going along here. But now and then what we'll see is that one glucose has a linkage of a different type. If we number the carbons again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and this glucose is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 again, notice that this time we have a 1 to 6 glycosidic bond, which is exactly the same type of bond where we removed water in condensation. But because of its position, we now have this kind of branching. So the chain is now joined to another branch. So this is the 1,6 glycosidic bond. And what this does is, if you imagine this amylose chain is doing this in its shape, when there's a branch point, it connects to another one, and this amylose chain will do the slinky shape. And every time there's a branch, it connects to another amylose. So each time this happens, you've got branches of slinkies going off the main slinky. And it will just keep going and keep going, and all of those will have branches too. So this is how amylopectin is formed. So the reason this is good is because those additional 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds causes amylopectin to have side branches with more accessible ends. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4 accessible ends, and of course there will be more than this. And this is really useful because if the amylase enzyme comes along and snips away, it has more places for the enzymes to go and cut away alpha glucose, and so this is a quicker release for alpha glucose. And if it's a quicker release of alpha glucose, the quicker we can get them into respiration. So it's all about meeting the energy demands when something needs it. Having more accessible sites means that amylopectin is more easily broken down by the enzymes whenever the glucose is needed. So we have more accessible sites. A final very important polysaccharide used for energy storage is found in animals. And in animals, the main polysaccharide energy store is one called glycogen. So this isn't really found in plants. Glycogen is mainly found in cells with a high metabolic rate, so those that have a high demand of energy. For example, cells of the liver, which are busy doing detoxification, and the muscle. So we know the liver is a large organ involved in lots of processes, and muscles are very active too, because obviously they're controlling movement and our posture, and they're constantly active. So glycogen is actually a very similar molecule in structure to amylopectin, with many alpha glucose molecules joined by 1,4 and 1,6 glycosidic bonds. So glycogen is very similar to what we saw with amylopectin. We've got these alpha glucose molecules and we've got these numbered carbons. So you can see that we've got another chain of 1 to 4 glycosidic bonds. We've also got this 1 to 6 glycosidic bond. So we've got essentially the same structure as amylopectin. Slinkies branched off to another slinky technically called a helix, of course, making that similar structure we saw before. The main difference is with glycogen, these 1 to 6 glycosidic bonds making the branches are found much more frequently. They're much more regular. And so we have a very highly branched structure. So amylopectin would have had the main helix with branches coming off and the occasional branch on those two. So it did have lots of branching, but it was only very occasional. Whereas with glycogen, we've got this helix structure again, and of course we have branching, but it happens much more often. So the branching is very, very frequent, and then those will have branches very frequently too, and so will they, and you can see that it would be a very complicated, very highly branched molecule. So this one has even more accessible units or accessible ends for those enzymes to attack. So any enzyme that wants to remove alpha glucose has multiple choices this time, because it's branching so often. So the release of energy is much, much faster compared to amylopectin and by far compared to amylose. So this means that because of all of these accessible ends, glycogen can be rapidly hydrolyzed to alpha glucose by enzymes at lots of different points. This is really important. Why do animals have glycogen but plants don't? Well, animals have higher metabolic demands or requirements than plants. Plants do carry out a lot of processes and obviously they're growing, repairing themselves and carrying out lots of different things. But the demand is much more in animals because they're much more mobile. 
They move around, they run around, they use muscles and nervous tissue. Plants don't have any muscles or nerves. And they don't tend to have as large organs as we do. So the demand is so much bigger for animals. So you can see this in examples like deer running away from predator and predators chasing their prey. So we're much more active and therefore our demand is greater. So it's better for us to have a very branched molecule which we can access at lots of points to quickly release lots of alpha glucose and therefore quickly carry out respiration. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.